Tommy Rollins. Man, uh, talking about how time flies with uh, your kids, but I actually feel like, uh, you know, your story was one I was covering back in 2008. Yeah. And that seems like last week. Yeah, it wasn't. It was 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy to think about. Yeah. Um, a lot of life since then. You were yeah. talking, you've had, uh, so you just had a daughter then, but now you have three boys since then. They're that's wrestling right. here today. That's right. Yeah, I have uh, yeah. an eight year old son who's wrestling today, and then I have twin six year old boys that are wrestling today. So, what's it like? Do they, uh, <clears throat> do they understand like the level that you competed on? Uh, my eight year old is more into the sport, and he's two years older, so he's, he's starting to kind of understand mm -hmm. a little bit. My six-year-olds, I think they just know I wrestled for the Buckeyes. That's the extent of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, but yeah, they um, they enjoy the sport for what it is as an eight and six-year-old. So I think that's a success so far, and we just want to keep them engaged and interested and encouraged by the sport, <clears throat> while also hopefully giving them a foundation. I think technically and, and mentally to be able to comprehend the sport when they get to be an older age. So, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so that's something I think about uh, myself. I, I was telling you, I have a, a son, he's almost yeah. one, and hopefully he wants to wrestle. Yeah. But I think about, you know, what I, do I want to coach him? Do I just want to be dad? Or, you yeah. know, what's it like mixing the, the coach slash dad role? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think Some it's a challenge. Some people do it really well, other people suck at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming from an official. There you go. He sees it all. So I think but, it's, um, I'm I, coach too, uh, but not my own. I think it's an interesting dynamic that is hard to uh, hard to um, you know wrap your head around, and so. Uh, do, you, do you know what we're doing? An interview. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all good, man. Not a big deal. I just. I'm so sorry. No worries. Yeah. No worries. So at any rate, um, you know it's it's a tough balance, but I think you know I think wrestling is the greatest sport in the world. So. Um, you know, with that being said, it's it's something that is also kind of a, 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 an acquired taste. Yeah. So I think it's a challenge to, should I put my kids in the sport at a young age? Should I encourage them to do it? Are they having fun? How much do they have fun? Do they always like it? So you always play these mental mind games with yourself. But I think at the end of the day, if, if your heart's in the right spot and you're using their reaction and their emotions to guide your thoughts, I think it can be a good thing for them and it can help teach them um, the right values in life and things like that. So that's why I have them in as a young age. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's good. So it's been going well so far. So. And, and for you, is it fun? It is, yeah. And so, you know, any, any dad that says that they're not having fun on a personal level, you mm -hmm. know, is probably lying. Mm -hmm. So I think you got to check yourself up against the glass a little bit and recognize that hopefully – my fun isn't trumping how they feel, you know, and, and hopefully their fun is the same or better than mine so that we're not doing this for the wrong reasons. So I think you got to always ask yourself that question. Um, even if it's an obvious answer, you got to ask yourself that question. So I, to answer your question, though, I'm having a blast. <laughs> I love Good. it. I mean, I, I, I love it. Um, I love the conversations that stumble upon me my boys uh -huh. at such a young age, you know, talking to them about their effort, and their attitude, um, talking about how I'm proud of them, how, you know, and everything in between, how uh -huh. disappointed in them effort-wise, never result-wise. And so I always say that <clears throat> it's very difficult to manufacture those types of conversations with an eight-year-old. Uh -huh. And somehow, some way, wrestling, wrestling creates those situations. Mm -hmm. And, um, allows me to connect with my kids in a way that maybe other people do in other, in other aspects of life, but I don't know any other way to connect with my kids at that young of an age mm -hmm. where I'm talking to them about values and being a good person and growing up to be a good man. And like somehow, somehow because of wrestling, these conversations happen with such young kids. And so I'm thankful for that. Did, was your dad involved in your wrestling growing up? Yes. Did you wrestle young? Yeah, I started when I was six. And, you know, I, I had such a great experience in wrestling all the way through that I'm trying to perhaps duplicate the environment, not the results, but the environment that I was brought up in. Because mm -hmm. that's how good it was for me. 
are some of the conversations you talk about, does it remind you of ones that you might have sure. had with your dad? 100%, oh, cool. yeah, 100%. And so, and I remember the, the, the you know, some, I remember when I was real little, he would say things and I didn't understand the depth of what he was suggesting oh. or saying. And then as I got older, it started to make sense. And so I, I sensed, you know, sometimes I'm talking over my own kids' heads. Uh -huh. But I feel like in three years when they understand it, the fact that it's like the twelfth time they've heard it will probably help them understand it better when they get older. So I still talk to them that yeah, way. That's cool, like a you know, aha moment or light flips on or like oh, that's, that's right. That's oh right. an experience to be like, that's what dad was talking about. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, because my wife and I really talk about effort and attitude with our kids and it's almost like my kids never really believed it. Mm -hmm. But the more they do sports, especially wrestling, the more they realize that it is about effort and attitude because sometimes when they win, we talk about how we're disappointed in their effort and attitude. And then sometimes, like today, I have, my son's lost two matches, heartbreakers, mm -hmm. and I picked them up and held them and talked to them and they're like, kind of like, wait, you're not, you're not upset. It's yeah. like, no, you're, you did everything you could have done. And so uh -huh. it also like helps them understand like, really, it is, it is about my effort and my attitude that is what you're preaching that is what's important to you and it's like yeah that's that's the foundation of a lot of things in life so you know they're gradually learning that the result kind of takes care of itself which you know is nice at a young age yeah that's kind of crazy you know you say that like you, you, I don't know maybe I don't know if I'm seeing it right but like your kids almost hey like is dad mad at me or, yeah. or something and, and, I'll, and like, I'll be candid you, because I'm you know I'm not I'm not super laissez-faire with them, how I raise my kids, so I'll be mm -hmm. candid. Sometimes they win, and they're shell-shocked with my reaction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean I, I won? And it's like, well, I think the ingredients that you displayed out there were, you know, less than admirable in terms of attitude and effort. And so, you know, each time you talk to them about talk to them about those things on both sides, when they lose and they have a great effort, or when they win and they have a poor mm -hmm. effort or attitude, they start to really align with... I think what what matters in life and, and sports teach you that, in my opinion, especially wrestling. Mm -hmm. So, um, are your expectations on your kids the same as any other kid you coach, or are they are they different um, in any way? It's a good question. I think that I take personal accountability in my own kids in a deeper way. So, and, mm -hmm. and when I say that, I don't mean winning or losing. I just, I feel personally accountable to how they process things. And if they don't process them the way that, with, that they're supposed to, which happens a lot, because they're eight mm -hmm. and six, mm -hmm. um, I guess I feel count, accountable to talking to them in a, in a more in-depth way. But I, I do take the same approach to every kid, and I coach 61 kids at a community club, and cool. so, I, I talk to them about the same values, the same merits of the sport, the same reactions, the same, you know, importance level of attitude and effort, and let the result take care of itself. So, so it is, the, the message is the same, but I probably spend more time talking about that message with my own kids. So you I mean, you've coached every level, and yeah. I would imagine I, mean, I would imagine that coaching the highest level would help you on every level. Right. But would coaching six year olds for any way uh, teach you anything or help you coach like um, you know your, your top level guys yeah I think um, I feel like I'm relearning the sport coaching kids and I'm, 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 I'm remembering what the what the founding elements of being successful are you know and it's sometimes you know you, you fool yourself at the higher levels like man it's just about raw talent you know it's just mm -hmm. about uh, the, you know the knack to win when 30 seconds to go you know little things that you talk about a lot at the high levels whereas when you get with these kids it's about you know are you able to stay focused yeah you know, um, can you keep a highly sustained effort for through the duration of the match can you have emotional control throughout and so you see that like a roller coaster at these ages so I think you just get reminded of really what what the founding elements of success are and how how it is a learned, a lot of it is a learned skill. Mm -hmm. It's not gifts. I mean, there's certainly gifts that we're given, and people have, you know, but but a lot of this is learned skills, learned skills. And so you see that when you're working with little kids. Nice. Um, 
What is uh, your goal if you, if you you're working with the kid throughout his youth, <coughs> and you know if you're sending him off to the next level? Yeah. Or this probably I don't know if you work through high school or whatever. If you're yeah. sending somebody off to the next level, what do you what do you hope that they have like kind of ingrained in them? I think I can only say that about my own kids because I intend to work with them as long as they want to wrestle. And uh, you know my goals for them is to you know I mean wrestling's in my soul. And so I would love for them to have that same um, appreciation for the sport and gain the same values that I, that I gained. And I think that you can only get there by having a significant amount of success and a significant amount of failure. And I think that, you know, truth be told, I think if you can compete for a state championship at the high school level, mm -hmm. I've thought a lot about this, I think if you're in contention for the state championship at the high school level, whether you win it or not, you've probably got 80% of what Jordan Burroughs got out of going all the way. And so, yeah. in my opinion, you know, it's yeah. just I'm using round quick math, but I just think that if you're if you're if you're invested in that way, you know, you get a, you can get a lot out of the sport. You can get a lot, a lot of mileage. And what's cool is that every kid out there today has that chance. You know, you mm -hmm. don't have to be. Jordan Burroughs to compete for a state championship in the mm -hmm. state of Ohio. You just got to want to do it and set your mind to it. I'm not talking about winning the state title. I'm just talking about competing. So if my kids can compete for a state championship as high school wrestlers, I think that they'll get a lot out of this sport, a lot of mileage out of it. So it's got to come from within, though. You can't manufacture greatness. You can't even manufacture the passion to do something. It just it comes from within. So hopefully that they pick up on that. 15 years. Uh, that this tournament, the grade school's been going on 20 for the junior high. How long have, how long have you been around this event? It's my second year. Second year. Okay. Second year. I, I never sure. went when I was a kid because it wasn't around when I was a kid. Gotcha. Um, but I've known about it from afar. I know yeah. the people that are behind running the OAC, Jared Off for Jude Roth and and crew, and um, I think it's an outstanding event. That's I think awesome. it's, um, yeah. you know, there's a lot of state tournaments, and I don't want to confuse my kids with that. So. We only attend one and we only talk about one. And mm -hmm. so it just gives them that one target at the end of the year that they can think about and uh, take take for what they want with it. So I think it's a great event. Well, they surely give them the, a good feel here with yeah. like the little tunnel feel. Yeah. I, I saw some pictures from several uh, state tournaments, high school level state tournaments yeah. that uh, just, it blew me away. And then to have an organization put together something like this, I think is, yeah. is really outstanding. They're, but, they're pretty intentional about mimicking the state high school tournament, which I think is great, and so it's good. Well, it's a good state to have it, and uh, yeah. the, the, the level of wrestling I see in Ohio, I was lucky enough to go to the high school state championships, yeah. Ohio State, yeah. you know, the state values wrestling, but also produces some super some super yeah. wrestlers. What's what's uh, your explanation for the level of talent that Ohio. comes out, and like, it's deep, you know, yeah. you're seeing guys that our lower place knockoff two-time state champions in, yeah. uh, in the high school tournament. Yeah, I can't say that I know how it started, but I know that it, I feel like it's just a system that feeds itself now. You mm -hmm. know, if, if you want to, you know, if you want to survive and, and be successful in this state, you have to compete with people at this level. And then the next guys come up, and if they want to survive and compete in the state, they got to challenge that guy at that level. Mm -hmm. So it just, it kind of feeds itself. I don't know how or why it started. But it's been going on for years. It's convenient. It's yeah. convenient because when you're in Ohio, it's like you really don't have to go to Tulsa or any of that stuff. Yeah. Because if you're good in Ohio, you're good around the country. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's three or four other states that have the same convenience. So it's nice. I don't feel like I have to travel too much. I just got to hit 71 North, head up to Cleveland four or five times a year, go to Pittsburgh once or twice a year, and you're set. I mean, you got you got the lay of the land. How's business? Very good. Very good. I, Updates. I, um, What's going on? I, I sell produce for a living, so that's what I do. That's going well. But um, I'm a partner at Rudis, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going very well. I mean, my, my business partner, Jesse Lang, runs the business. We have 22 employees. We're planning to do some very special things uh, very shortly here in the sport. And so uh, we're excited to continue to make an Ooh, impact intriguing. and drive value to wrestling. So Awesome. Well, uh, it's great to uh, catch up with you. and. Uh, Appreciate you putting time into wrestling. Yeah. Is there uh, anything else you want to share with the uh, wrestling community? No, no. I think um, 
I just feel I just, I just feel blessed to be in the wrestling community. And now I have three sons that I want them to somehow, in some way, gain an affinity for the sport the way that I have. And so that's a process. And I think they're on their way. I think they like what they're doing. I think they enjoy it. And, um, you know, so that's good. All right. Appreciate it, Tommy. All right. Thanks, brother.